today we're going to pull this switch apart on the KR4 and see what's going on inside it. I got this light from Hank and I, I've had 30, 40 lights from him and they've all been great. This one, however, had kind of a grindy switch and it was like too clicky and it was sometimes really hard to depress. It felt like it was grinding on the sides. I didn't know what was going on, but um, all the other KR4s I had that were titanium were fine. This was the only one, so I knew it wasn't just a titanium thing. So I told Tank, and on my next order, he sh sent me out this replacement switch. And uh, let me take it out for a second. All it is is just a little little uh, metal micro switch. Well, not micro switch, a little metal... Uh, little metal uh i forget what these are called actually but anyways it just um makes contact between a positive and negative um when you click it so um the new one felt great and then i went to pull this apart and i found out it was kind of a big pain in the butt so let's take a look at it and see what's doing so when you take the switch off here the tail cap in the switch you're going to find this retaining ring, this brass retaining ring in there. And you're going to need a spanner wrench like this. You can get these on Amazon. This is the end you should use, and you just uh, adjust it till it's the right distance. And then you stick it in there on those two slots there. Let's see if we can do this on camera. So let me, there we go. Got them in the slots. And then you just, you know like this, right? And now that it's loose, it'll come out a lot. Now when you get it out a lot, from there on, I'll just take my finger and I'll just do it with my finger like this. Just rotate the tail cap where I'm holding the ring and it will come right out like that, okay? Now here's the thing though. I made it look so easy, right? The reason why I made it look easy is because I emailed Hank and said, I can't get your switch out. And he says, oh yeah, I use cyanoacrylate super glue on the ring against the threads. So you need uh, this debonder. He used a term, which I wish I had looked it up before the video. Like it's called a spur spurgator or something. I don't know. He used a, a term in the email and I didn't know what the heck he was talking about. I did a Google search and this came up. I sent him a picture of this and said, is this what you're talking about? And he says, exactly. So I got this on Amazon. You can look at the label. I've never used it before, but apparently what this does is it takes the cyanoacrylate that's hardened and it kind of just turns it into goop again. So when I first got it, and it took a long, long time to get, it came from China, even though it was Amazon, it took like a month and a half. I got it on this brush here and I just, you know, this rings in here and I slathered it and nothing, well actually, no, the first time I didn't, I was kind of dainty, I just put a little bit around. And then I immediately tried the spanner wrench, and uh, it wouldn't budge. So then I slathered it, tried the spanner wrench, wouldn't budge. So then I, like, basically just cover this whole PCB and everything with the stuff, let it sit for, like, four hours, and then I try again, and it won't budge. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's going on? So I walk away, and then I just, you know, do something else for a few hours, uh, I come back, I had left the this stuff there the whole time, so we're talking hours now, uh, and then I just muscle it, and, and it breaks free, and everything is good. I think that maybe the prolonged amount of time, the amount I used, and the fact that I walked away all helped, because I think that I was imparting heat on the tail cap from holding it, so um, I think walking away let it cool, and I think that the um, titanium and brass was able to kind of separate a little bit and not be so um, expanded. Anyhow, once you get that ring out, okay, then I'm going to dump this out, okay? And those are the parts. Now what you've got is you've got a tail cap, you got the button itself, you got a little gasket, and this little guy right here. Don't lose that, okay? Now, if you take the switch he sent me, and you take the original switch... They seem the same to me. They don't really seem any different. Um, and that was my first clue that maybe the switch wasn't actually the issue. So what I did was I basically just cleaned up all the cyanoacrylate that was all in here. And I um, just basically reassembled it. 
And I wanted to address the couple issues I had, which was uh, it felt kind of hard to press. It was a little grindy and it made weird noises. So first off, what you're going to do is you're going to put this tail switch back in there. But I felt that maybe the titanium, the titanium of this uh, button and the titanium of the tail cap was grinding. That's So what I did was I just took a little... A little super lube here okay like that just about that much and on the tail cap I just kind of put it on this inside edge here like that okay I might even have too much I'm gonna wipe it away the excess okay because you don't need it everywhere you just want it on that surface okay I got a little left on my finger so for good measure I'm just gonna Stick it against the side of the tail switch here. Oh, I didn't do something that you should probably do. I wiped everything down really good. The reason why I didn't do that is because I've already done it before the video. This is me basically pantomiming the second time that I've fixed the switch. The switch already got way better after I did all this. So now, once you got that back in there, I'm going to turn... I'm just spinning this switch around kind of get that stuff all gooped in there it's uh i can tell it's in there because um it's not falling out now it's like the the uh lube is holding it so we're gonna take this gasket the gasket goes with this big side down and this little nipple up okay i know it uh so basically these should look the same it should be like a little nipple and the little nipple on the top and this big gasket uh this big kind of uh cylinder fits into the button so you just drop it in there Kind of make sure it's seated. Then you take that little cap I was telling you not to lose, and you kind of just drop it in there. And then you gotta flip it over so that the cap is over the nipple. So just flip it over, kind of like. Don't make a fool out of me, cap. There we go. Oh, I had it on there, and then the lube that was on my finger stuck to it. Okay, flip, flip, flip. You know, the first time I did this, I used tweezers, and then I felt like it was too hard of a deal, so every other time I've just used my fingers. Uh, that didn't make it look easy, because I got in there, uh, and then the lube that was on my fingers like, made it come back out on my finger. But now that you got the cap in there, then you just take this little switch and PCB, and you just kind of drop it in there like that, okay? Now, once it's in there, just make sure that... Just making sure it's centered and I like where it is. Then, and, and notice that this can rotate, right? So the reason I mentioned that is because once I get, get this ring in here, if I don't like the feel, I'm going to loosen the ring and I'm going to just rotate the PCB again. Uh, that, I've noticed that, you know, that actually makes a big difference. Sometimes it feels way different depending on how the PCB is rotated. Okay, there we go. All right, so that is going back in there. And again, I'm just using my finger and just kind of turning. Now, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of friction, not a lot, but just enough that I'll go ahead and line this up and just spin the, the tail cap. Okay. Okay, now, it is now tightened lightly, and I'm going to go just that much more so it wasn't even any it wasn't even a 16th of a turn okay so right when it touched i went a little bit more let's see what it feels like that yeah, feels good doesn't feel grindy feels feels good now sometimes it even feels different once you stick it on the light with a battery the additional tension of the battery can change it okay so let's put that battery in there. Let's see what let's see what's doing. Okay. Oh, I like that. Actually, that came out really good. If I hadn't liked how it was going to feel, I would have uh, pulled it apart, as I said, taken the ring out, and then just kind of turned the PCB and then and then tightened the brass ring down again, but. It, it's it's a nice 
It's not grindy. It's not too clicky or loud. Yeah, I like that a lot. So that, that came out really good. Now, I have not been re-gluing the rings down, the retaining rings. Um, I, I want to be able to pull it apart if I need to. If this switch is acting funky, I'll know what's going on. I got this tool. I'll just tighten it again. Uh, I know that Hank glues them down, but again, then again, he's trying to make them for the casual consumer that's not going to work on their stuff. I wouldn't glue it back down with with CA. What I would do if I needed to is just put a little thread locker on it. Now, this is the purple thread locker. This is l specifically low strength. This is the kind that if you muscle it, it's going to come loose again. So if you're going to use thread locker, don't use, um, I, I don't even remember the colors, but I think the, I think the highest one is either red or yeah, red or blue, but the purple is the lowest. So, um, just get, you know, some low, uh, strength reversible, like easily openable with strength, um, thread locker. And that's what I would do. All right. Well, I hope that that was uh, informative on how to take this thing apart because, I know that when I first tried to do it, I was lost.